So today's class is about matrix. Okay, this is um, matrix is where we find everything we need to do for uh, the real estate. Okay, there's uh, several items that should be looked at prior to starting uh, matrix so that you're sure that everything um, is to you, like to your name, to your phone number, to your everything, right? Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna click here where it says matrix. Okay, and this is the main page of Matrix. So this is the main page here. You're gonna see up here, this is the Miami Associate Realtors. Um, if you click here, it's just gonna bring you right back to this page, okay? So this is always the main page. Um, then you're gonna have these links up here, okay? My Matrix is pretty much where you're gonna do a lot of the things that um, you're gonna need to do in Matrix. So here in Matrix, you're gonna find the dashboard, which is this. Uh, contacts, auto emails that you've sent out, save searches that you've done, sent emails to other clients, CMAs that you've created, or your listings. Okay, this is all going to be here, right? If you're looking to search for properties, you're going to go on the search screen. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Your first option is going to be um, actual sales. Okay, so single family or condo sales that actually includes also townhouses or anything like that, right? Um, I'm going to get into this a little more in a little bit, but I do want to take you over here on this right side where it has your name. Okay. It should say, hello, your name, and it should have a drop down. Okay, if you click on it, you're going to see a button that says settings. Okay. Uh, aside from that, you have a help button there. You'll also be able to log into the mobile site here, um, which for those of you that are looking to do this mobily, um, you could just go to matrix.com. Um, on your phone and it'll take you directly to the mobile website. Um, and here you can change it from English to Spanish if that's you know something you guys are interested in doing. But the settings tab is extremely important because you want to make sure that all the information for you is here in settings. So if you click here in settings, you're going to see these tabs here, okay? One's going to say my information, you're going to see hot sheets, portal notifications, that's if anybody's been uh, in a portal recently to look at any properties of yours. Uh, speed bar, shortcuts, uh, custom displays, configuration of the actual screen, uh, team settings. If you wanna create any teams, you can create a team. Um, so this one here, my information is most likely the most important one, okay? You definitely wanna check this one when getting into my matrix. So click here and you'll be able to see these uh, tabs up here. Okay, this is going to include the information that the association has for you. Okay, the header and footer that is going to be shown every time you send an email to any of your clients. CMA cover sheet, um, which is like the cover sheet for any comparable market analysis that you're going to do. Um, email signature, which is the signature that you're gonna create uh, for any email that you send through Matrix. That way you don't have to worry about writing all the time uh, regards or sincerely, Albert Zimbaco, realtor associate, and then the address of the company and everything, right? If you have a website, you're going to go ahead and put in a website here. I don't have a website, so I haven't used this, right? And the portal profile is just basically everything that all these tabs here, and it's just into one, right? You could just change everything. You want to change your photo, you can change your photo. If you want to change the greeting of the portal greeting, you can, you can create your own inventory, a slideshow, you can create one of your listings or your withdrawn listings, right? Or any new videos that you may have uh, created with uh, new properties, right? You can upload them here, right? But, so let's start here in information. You're gonna see that most of the information is in gray, right? In order to change that, you're gonna have to click the override button and then it'll allow you to change whatever it is that you do here. Whenever you make a change though, make sure you click the save button so that it saves whatever changes you made, okay? Now, even though you made the change here on the screen, it doesn't always translate to the association. So if your email is incorrect here and you need to change it, you can go ahead and change it and save. And during the session that you're in right now, anything you send out to clients will be with that new email address. 
but if you physically have to change it with the association, but in order for it to always come back as the same um, email, you do have to contact the, the association um, and let them know that a change needs to be made. Okay, and they'll go ahead and change it in the system so that it'll always appear here and you don't have to do the override every time. Okay, so very quickly, if you guys are here right now, take a look at everything, make sure that everything is okay um, and that you are you know, sure that all the information that's in there is perfect for you, okay? And then once you're done there, you can go down here to these last four lines. Here, there's no override button, so anything that you put um, is automatically going, you can write it here, right? So this is a tagline, any slogan you wanna put, you can go ahead and put whatever slogan there. I have this slogan here for purposes of this class so that you can see you know, how it's gonna come out. There's any additional information you want to put, you can put additional information here. Um, you know, if let's say you have another business, uh, photography or something like that, um, or insurance or something like that, sure, just put here, also insurance agent, and you know, maybe put some information of your insurance if you want to there. Uh, gives you that option to do that. Uh, website address, you can put whatever your website address is here. If you do have, um, Conversion. Conversion does give you a website address. This is my website address for conversion. So I've placed it here so whenever the I send emails to clients, they're able to see my website and they can go ahead and you know log into that website if they'd like. Right? So once you're done with that, any changes that you made, please make sure you press save. Okay, then we can go and move on to the header and footer. So this is the header and footer. Um, whenever you send an email, this is what's going to show up for your client. Okay, emails any reports that you do, it's all gonna come up on the top of those pages, okay? So it allows you to select whatever banner you want, right? If this is a, the banner you like, you can keep that. If not, you can click here in the settings so in order for you to select a different banner, okay? When selecting a different banner, it'll give you various options for you to, to choose from, right? It'll have your information here on the side, if you want a picture, you can put a picture here too. This picture, uh, I received it from Juliana at the office. Um, so just you know, contact her, say that you need a copy of the logo to be able to upload into you know, Matrix or you need a picture of the logo, however you'd like. You can also put your picture there if you feel more comfortable putting your picture there. <clears throat> um, so the system will let you upload those pictures. I'll show you how to do that now. Right, so let's say, okay, you know what, I, 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 wanna, I wanna do a photo here of the beach, or actually this luxurious villa, right? It looks nice, so let's click that. Um, then you click preview, then you're gonna see what it shows up like, right? Here is the branding of this um, banner, right? I've already used the custom photo, and in order to upload or change the photo, you just click here, where it says change photo and it's gonna ask you to find the photo that you want, right? Once you choose the photo, it'll automatically set itself up right here in the corner, okay? The branding, you can change it however you want. If you don't wanna have your name on it, you know, you could just leave it blank. If you don't want your email, leave it blank, you know? However you wanna set it up, right? And you'll see that this branding is what puts anything here, right? So I would like to put you know, real estate empire group, and then I can put Albert Zimbago, and then let's put, you know, associate realtor, and then I can put uh, my email address, and then let's put my phone number. Oh, right? So there you go. I have the company name, right, sending it, and then, or I can change it. I can put this one as Albert Zimbaco, and then I can put the second one as Real Estate Empire Group, right? This way, my name is in the header, um, the first one in the header, and it shows that I'm the one that's you know, sending you the documentation or the, the, the email. So this is how you're going to customize that banner area, okay? Uh, once you're done, you're gonna click OK, press Save, and then it'll completely save everything that you've done. All right. The CMA cover sheet, same thing. This is the cover sheet. It's going to ask you to upload a photo if you want to, but it's going to put the information that was picked up from information tab over here. So any information that you have over here, it'll automatically 
translate to this page right here, okay? So this is a cover sheet which will allow you to send a report of a CMA to your clients. And this initial cover sheet will have your name and your information, right? So that's what this is for. Here's your email signature. Um, you can go ahead and, you know, if you have some time right now, go ahead and add your email signature. This is what I have regards Albert. You can change the uh, font on it. Um, you can change the size on it. This is, um, you can block it. This is the size right here, different sizes. This is the font. If you want to change it to a different font, you can. Um, so go ahead. I'm going to give you guys a minute to go ahead and, you know, make your signature there. Um, that at least will know that you have a signature for any of your emails. Okay, so uh, hopefully you guys did that. Um, that's perfect. Uh, this agent webpage, you don't have to really fill it out unless you have something you wanna fill out here, or you wanna uh, create a website. This uh, does activate a website for you here in Matrix, um, but every time you send an email, basically it takes the client to that portal, right? Um, and then this is the portal profile. This is what I had showed you before where you can add your photo and things like that, okay? Um, so any questions on this um, settings, page where it's over here on the right hand side. No. All right, great. So let's go back to my matrix. All right, this is the main page and I want to show you about this main page what it has, right? It has some external links here uh, where you guys can go to wherever you're selling the property um, and look at any tax implications or anything like that. So if you're going to Miami Dade tax, you can automatically click here, open a new tab, and it's gonna take you to the property search website for uh, Miami-Dade taxes, okay? Where you just plug in the folio number or the address of the property and search, and you're good to go, okay? Um, you also have the one for Broward County. If you wanna see the Broward County one, just click it. It's gonna take you to the Broward County property search one, all right? Um, we also have Monroe County, Martin County, St. Lucie County. So these are all different county tax uh, websites we can go to to figure out any information of the properties that we are trying to purchase or sell, right? Uh, it also has schools. So if you're looking for schools in the area of wherever you're going to buy, you can come over here and click and it'll tell you what schools are within that area. You got Florida Department of Education. Um, then you also have quick links to little tabs that we use. So the property search for Miami-Dade is here, but this IMAP also acts as a property search for uh, 
the property you're using. So if you want to do a quick property search as well through IMAP, this IMAP is what Matrix uses to find property information. Um, if you click on it, you'll see that it'll be a search field. And in the search field, you just got to, you know, write in whatever it is you want to search for. So owner name, you can put the search value here. Property address, you can put the search value here. Uh, if you know the parcel subdivision, things like that, it also allows you to change whatever search criteria you're looking for, right? So um, this is just as good as a Miami-Dade website. This is the one that Matrix usually goes through. It's not as updated as I'd say Miami-Dade is updated, but it does, for the most part, show uh, the same information. Uh, when I say updated, it just means that maybe the property was recently sold about a month ago and there was a flip done. IMAP probably won't have the registered information yet, whereas um, Miami-Dade will have that registered information. Uh, so that is uh, IMAP. It, it's good. It, it works for doing contracts and everything like that, which um, I showed you in the different classes of contracts and lease, how to find that. Uh, you also have form simplicity. This is where you're going to find all the different types of contracts for real estate, okay? Um, so any contracts that you may have uh, that you have to do, you're going to go to form simplicity to be able to fill them out, okay? Uh, I do have another class for form simplicity, which I do recommend you guys join me. Uh, it will be probably towards the end of this month. I think it's about the 20th of October. Um, but I do show you how to use that system and how to find the documentation that you will need. Okay. Uh, showing, configure showing time. If you have any listings, you can configure showing time here for any of your listings. Um, and those are pretty much the ones I use more often. This RPR is one that is used very often too. I don't specifically use it, but it is for um, comparables. Um, it does work very well for comparables. I like to do comparables through the actual system. Um, which I'll show you how to do that very briefly here um, so that you have an idea. I do also have a listings class, um, and in that listings class, I'm more in-depth on how to do comparables. But I'll give you a quick, you know, search here so you have an idea of what to do. Um, so these other page, these other um, areas here are also very well, are also very utilized, okay? So let's, for instance, go to my listings here. Let's say you don't like the placement of this, right? And you'd like this external links more on this side. You can grab this, and if you bring it to this side, and you bring external links to this side, you'll see you can move this uh, site, this website, however you feel more comfortable. If you want my listings on this side, that's fine. If you want to change everything on this side, that's fine. You want to put the market watch up here that's good the search field will go down automatically okay so you can really um, edit this page however you feel more comfortable editing the page okay where it says my listings is where you're going to find the listings for our company right so if you look here where it says my firm's active listings if you click on it those are going to be all the listings that real estate empire group has okay all our agents that have listed a property will have listings here in this site or this uh, link Okay, so you can go through this link and you can look at, you know, all the listings uh, that we have um, to see if, you know, maybe your client may be interested in something that's here already, right, instead of going through a same search. Being able to sell, rent, or, you know, purchase a, a listing that we have already um, is actually better for the company, right? We'll get the full commission, and aside from that, you have direct contact with the agent because they're part of our company. So it's a lot quicker to be able to do business that way. Um, whereas, you know, of course you can still buy from another agent. That's not a problem, but you know, email and, and uh, text messages have to be answered promptly. So, but working within the company, it's a lot easier to get information from the actual agent. So if there's something in the property or in the area that your client is interested in, and you may want to go here to, my firm's active listings to see if there's anything there that you know may interest your client um, and that's a good way of searching right um the other thing uh that i like to do is this market watch okay this market watch to me is a lifesaver it's very quick search on anything that you want okay it is easily customizable 
and you can customize it here where the word customizes. Okay, right now it's showing me the market watch for single family homes and, and townhomes being sold. Let's say I'm doing rents. If I click here on rents, this is going to change to things in the market watch for rents. Okay, new rents that have come in today, back on the market today, price decrease today, price increase today, active with contract, right? I mean, these are good little quick tips for us to see. If I wanna see what's decreased today, and I click here, this is going to show me a map. Click on the map here. Right, and this map is gonna show me properties today that have lowered or decreased in value. So the closer that I get to the map, the more it's gonna tell me the area. So let's say my client is interested in this fountain blue area, right? I can use this tool. Oh, no way, I'm sorry. The tools aren't available here <laughs> um, in this quick search. It's only available in the regular map. But if I know this is the area my client's looking for, Let's look at these properties, right? This one is 1650. My client's looking for something that's 1600, two bedrooms. You know what? Why not send that to her? So we can click it. Then I can go over here. This one's 1500. It's exactly what they're looking for, two bedroom. Let's click that. Um, this is another two bedroom for 1650. Why not? We can put an offer at 1600 for here. And here's another one at 1600. You know, perfect. Two bedrooms, everything, what they're looking for. I'm happy with this. Now that I got these four, I can from right here go to email after clicking them. And I can send an email to my client. I could just put whatever their email address is. Hey, uh, here is a quick search on the areas in that area for properties that have just lowered their price. I'll send you another email, um, you know, very shortly with more properties available within that area. You know what I mean? But this is a quick sending an email to a client so that that way they see that, you know, you're interested in what they need and you are on top of, you know, the conversation you just had with them um, and you're sending them something right away. You know, what, what they want to see, what most clients like to see is that you have interest in whatever it is that they um, expressed, right? So they're looking for a two bedroom or something like that. Um, sorry guys, give me one second. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is a quick way to be able to send them an email. So to show them that, you know, they've been doing or, or that you're listening to what it is that they want, right? And more options for the client, right? And these are ones that have dropped in price. So for us, these are great because it allows us to be able to uh, negotiate the price even better, okay? So there's a quick way to do that. Um, you can customize it how I was saying before. When you click customize, you'll be able to customize the area that you want the system to look for. Right, I have Miami-Dade County customized, right? So it's only gonna show me things from Miami-Dade County. If I wanna customize it further to show anything that's two bedrooms, I can do that and it's only gonna give me in that quick search things that are two bedrooms, right? Um, it doesn't let me do, I mean, it'll let me do the city here, right? Or the zip code here that I want and it'll only customize for that zip code. Now, the only thing is if you wanna change later, Whatever you customize now is what's always gonna show up on your screen. So every time you log in, if you wanna change it to something else, you'd have to customize that to something else. In the meantime, I always keep it as Miami-Dade County um, and that's what I have as a quick link. So that that way I can search all of Miami-Dade County when I have a client that is interested. And, you know, something in Miami-Dade and I can do a quick link, right? Okay, so um, these are the external links. Went through the market watch, um, which is a great tool. And then we have a quick search here. I don't like to use this quick search um, because it doesn't really give me the, like if I put status here, 
it, it only allows me to click on one status and remove, right? It doesn't let me do everything. So whenever I want to do a search, I'd rather go to the actual search, right? And that's a search tab right here. Um, so this search right here will allow you to search different uh, properties, okay? We have RE1, RE2, which is actually considered uh, single family homes or condos or townhouses. Basically anything that is um, for sale and is residential, okay? Um, anything residential and for sale, you're gonna find here, standing buildings, so houses, you know, things that are already built, okay? Um, the bottom one, residential income, is actually duplexes, triplexes, or fourplexes. So if you have an investor who's looking for properties that are duplexes, triplexes, or fourplexes, this is the one that you're going to use, okay? This residential land, okay, boats and docks, is, basic, is basically a uh, residential land. But boats and docks can also be sold too. So if for any reason you have a client that has a boat and needs to dock their boat in a certain location, you can find different um, docks where you can purchase so the boat can be docked there, right? Um, or you can find land. If a client's looking to build properties or build a property in their own land, this is where you're going to go to find residential land, okay? This fourth one is residential rental, okay? Anything that is a rental um, for residential is going to be here, meaning any condo, any townhouse, any single family home, um, any duplex that's a rental. So anything that's residential, and is being rented is gonna fall under this category, okay? Uh, then we're gonna go to the commercial side here, okay? This is commercial land, business, agricultural, industrial, right? So if you have a client that's looking for warehouses or uh, not warehouse, but is looking for a, a piece of land that where he can build a warehouse or he's looking for a piece of land where he can park multiple cars. Um, he's looking for, you know, land to be agricultural. Maybe he wants to do a farm things like that, this is where you're going to find that commercial type of land, okay? If you have a client that's looking for commercial improved property, meaning warehouses, retail spaces, office spaces, doctor's offices, schools, um, uh, restaurants, right? Standalone buildings, things like that that are important that your client may be interested in buying, this is where you're going to find those improved commercials. Now, a lot of times people are looking for rentals of commercial properties, right? So we do have a rental for residential, okay? But the rental for commercial is also here where it says commercial improved. And I'll show you, if you actually click on it, you'll see here where it says transaction type, you can select from lease or sale. So either one of those is how it's gonna be able to search the criteria for commercial for you. Okay, so commercial rental or commercial purchase will be under the uh, commercial improved tab, okay? So we also have a business opportunity, okay? As realtors, we can, uh, we can sell also uh, businesses, right? So let's say there's a client that has a, what's it called, a, a barbershop, and he wants to sell the entire barbershop business, right, including all the materials that are inside the business, all the inventory of everything that they have, uh, the workers that are in there, uh, all the clientele that's in there. They just want to sell the entire business and they estimate their business is worth $75,000. Well, we can put a listing for the actual business, okay? Does that include the area that they're operating from? Yes. Um, it means that the lease would be transferred if there's a lease to their name, okay? If it's a purchase property, obviously they're going to sell the property with the business. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but if it's just a business and they're renting, that lease would then have to be negotiated with the landlord to be able to cross over the information to the new person that's buying the property, right? It's a little bit more um, information, a little bit more paperwork that needs to be done, but we can sell businesses if there's a business that wants to be set, sell, sold, okay? Um, so those are the ones you're going to use most often, right? If you want to see if there's any open houses in an area that you're going uh, to show property to, you can click here where it says open house. It's going to show you what open houses there are in whichever area you decide you want to go, right? You can put the criteria in there, 
So if you click open house, right, you'll be able to put, hey, I want to see if there's any open houses. Um, within this list price, total bedrooms, uh, this type of property. And then you go to the map. And when you get to the map, it's going to show you all the properties that have a current open house, right? And depending on where you want to go see the property, let's say it's here. If you click on it, it's going to say, hey, this one's having an open house. When you click on the listing, and it'll tell you from 12 to 4 on 10-4. It's public. Anybody can go from 12 to 4. And this way you can just tell your client, hey, I have this open house that's in this area. This might be something you're interested in. Do you want to go check it out? You don't need to set up an appointment or nothing. You already know that from 12 to 4, the property is going to be open for you to go see the property with your clients. Right? Um, so this is what you're going to use too. You can also search uh, agents and offices. Um, I've tried to use this search other MLSs, but I don't have the hang of it yet. There's a few details that I've never really played with. And um, I mean, it's showing me here the keys, for instance, right? And I want to, I very much doubt that there are only four properties that are available in the keys right now. Um, so I don't know exactly how to figure it out, um, how to search other I do know that if you do want to search another MLS that's not in Miami-Dade or Broward, um, then uh, you're going to have to sign up for the association for that county. Okay, so that I do know. We can see other properties in other counties, um, but those are properties that agents from Miami-Dade and Broward MLS or Mi Miami-Dade and Broward uh, Association have listed in the Miami-Dade and Broward Association for other counties, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have access to see, you know, the properties that are in Orlando through our MLS. We actually have to have uh, MLS for those counties in order to see them, okay? Um, any questions on this search tab? I mean, this search tab is going to be the one that you guys use more than anything on any property or on any search um, that you're going to do. Okay, perfect. So um, let's go to a listing. I want to show you guys what a listing looks like and how to read one. Okay, so here's a, um, let's just go to my matrix and let's go to uh, my listings, right? We're going to go to our company listings, right? So these are the listings for the firm. Okay. Um, let's take a look at, let's take a look at this one. Okay. Um, so this is what a listing site would look like or a listing page would look like you're going to have the address of the property here right you have the full address you'll have the ml number which is actually the mls number the number for the property id that we search for here in the mls the list price this is how much they're asking for okay it says the status if it's active or not if it's a short sale or an reo short sale obviously is something that you know we have to get approval through the bank from and REOs are basically foreclosures. Okay. Um, so if you see REO, yes, that means it's a foreclosure property. Okay. Then you're going to get a, a sign here of listing broker, who the broker is. That's obviously us. We're the broker for this. And then it'll tell you what area and what the legal description is for the property. Okay. This legal, legal description is important because if we have a client that let's say wants to purchase with an FHA, um, we have to make sure that FHA is, is, is accepted. Uh, so one of the ways that we can find out if FHA is accepted is if it has the words lot and block. Okay, so here it has the word lot. Um, it doesn't say block, but it is possible to accept FHA because um, it has a lot and block. This one, however, is not accepting FHA. Um, but it could be because the owner is not looking to accept FHA. Okay, uh, let me see if I can show you something a little bit more. Okay, see this one has lot here and this one says block. So you know for sure this one can accept FHA. The problem is the price range, right? So because it's 650, FHA doesn't go for that high of an amount. Um, that's probably why the other one didn't accept it either. FHA only goes up to about uh, $380,000. Um, so 
Um, anything more than that, you can't accept FHA. Let's see if we can find one that does. This one does. I don't know what, maybe it's 425. Yeah, okay, so this one does accept FHA. I was wrong on the amount. I think it's 425 for FHA, and this one's asking 420. It also says lot and block, so we do have the ability to be able to offer on an FHA loan here, right? It's also going to give you how many bedrooms, how many baths, if the property is furnished, right? They say furniture is for sale, so if it's furnished, great. Clients interested in any furniture, it can be purchased. Uh, it'll show you recent news on this property, recent changes on this property. This says that recently it went from 435 to 420. So at this point, we know that they're lowering the price. There's a way that maybe we can work this price out even a little lower. Um, but there's good negotiation here, okay? Uh, the square footage of the property is here as well. On the left hand side, it shows you here one through 42. That means there's 42 pictures of this property. If you click on it, it'll enlarge the pictures and then you'll be able to move side by side by all the pictures so you can take a look at what the interior of the property looks like. Your client will also be able to do this as well, right? Um, so that gives us an idea of, you know, if what's in the property is something our client is looking for. Once you start talking to your clients, you'll get to get a good feeling of what it is they want. Um, so your searches will be a little bit more pinpointed to what they're looking for. Um, but definitely whenever you're doing a search for the first time for any client, don't look at the pictures and say, this one looks nice. I'm going to send this one. This one doesn't look nice. I'm not going to send this one. Send everything that's available within the area and within the criteria they're looking for. This way, they will tell you what they like and what they don't like, and you don't make an opinion for them, okay? Uh, so that's important when you're looking at these uh, listings, right? Then you're gonna get location information. It's more um, numerical than anything, um, but it will give you the folio number here. So if you're looking for the tax in, uh, information of the property, you could just click here and it's gonna take you directly to IMAP, which is what I had explained before, the system works with IMAP. And you'll be able to see the information of the property here, who the owner of the property is here, um, the taxes that um, were paid for this year, a little bit of sales information of the area around there, um, the schools that are assigned in that area. So you get a little bit of information of that actual property by clicking on that folio number, okay? Then you're gonna get general information. It's gonna say type of property, what type of property it is. Um, Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to tell you what type of property it is. If it's HOPA, this is Housing for Older Persons Act. It's not Homeowners Association. This is Housing for Older Persons Act. How many garages it has, if there's a pool in the property, if there's a driveway, the square footage of the lot. It's going to give you a lot of information on the actual property of, uh, of, for the listing, right? Uh, then the remarks is going to tell you a little bit about the property, right? It's going to say what the agent has written for the property, right? Um, then you're going to tell, it's going to say what type of rooms they have if they added it. It's going to say it's master bedroom upstairs. It has tub and shower combination. There's family room. There's a dining and a living room, right? Then additional information here that is included with the property, what, it, what equipment is included, you know, the interior feature, first floor entry. There's a screen porch. So a few things here that, you know, may open the eyes of the client. Important information for us as agents, it's going to be here, this financial information. What terms are they accepting? They're accepting all cash. They're accepting a conventional loan, FHA loan, FHA 203 loans, VA approved. So basically all types of loans are being accepted for this property. Okay. If there's any loan that's not going to be accepted, it'll say here only the ones that will be accepted. Right. Then it's going to tell you if there's an association here, type of association. There's a homeowner association. It says it's only $13 a month. I mean, that's peanuts, right, for a homeowner's association. I don't know if that's an error or if that's actually true. But if that's actually true, that's basically there's no homeowner's association. It's only covering, you know, very minimal, right? So not a bad idea to have that. Then it's going to tell you the taxes that were paid last of the previous years, okay? 
Then when we go down to agent office information, it's going to give you the information of the agent that's listing it, right? You'll have here their company, their name, the address of the company, and then it'll say their phone number for the agent, their license number, and down here, compensation. This is what our commission would be if we were to bring the client. 3%, so it's usually 6%, half of 6% is 3%. That's usually what our commission would be, okay? Uh, then it's gonna tell you the occupancy, who's in the property, is it owner occupied, is it tenant occupied, is it vacant? At this point, we know it's owner occupied. It wouldn't be a good idea to just go to the property and knock on the door. Most people don't like that. We should be able to call and set up an appointment with this phone number to be able to make an appointment to go see the property if we're interested on. Or here it says the instructions of showing, it says appointment, call listing agent, or use showing assist, okay? So we have options here to be able to um, get, a, get an appointment to see this property, right? We'll notice here where it says DOM, that means days on market. How many days has it been online? How many days has it been on the MLS? 21 days, it's a fairly new listing, uh, has only been there for three weeks. Uh, but they're already showing that they're lowering property, the, the price, the listing price. So that to me tells me that this owner really wants to sell this property. Like they are not looking to have this long term on the market. They need to sell this as quick as possible. So we got it in a good uh, reason to go into this property if this is the one our client likes and negotiate. Because it's only been three weeks. They've already um, lowered the price and we have an opportunity, right? They're accepting any type of loan, a good opportunity here, okay? So, and the showing time is down here, okay? Uh, so I won't see it in this one, but let me do this really quickly so you can see what showing time looks like. Okay, so this is the same listing, but this is the way we would see it if we're actually looking for it out of where it says my listings. This is where you see it as, you know, a realtor. And you're going to see down here, it's going to give you these tabs. And here is the showing time tab, okay? So if you click on the showing time tab, it's going to give you here this website, or I'm sorry, it's going to give you this page where it's going to tell you appointments required wait for confirmation. Okay, depending on what type of appointment or what type of showing instructions the agent has put in there, it'll tell you what type here. So if you can just go and show, it's going to say go and show, no appointment necessary. And when you click here where it says sing, schedule a single showing, it's going to give you the lockbox code or it's going to tell you it's on Supra or it's going to tell you that the door is open. I mean, I've had a few of them say that. Um, so depending on what it says here is what you need to do with showing time. So this one. For instance, says appointment, wait for confirmation. So when I click schedule a single showing, it's gonna give me a, a calendar, all right? And in this calendar, I'm gonna go ahead and select what day I wanna go see it and what time I wanna go see it. Since it's owner occupied, obviously the owner has said, hey, between this time and this time, it cannot be shown. So on Friday, it cannot be shown until 12 p.m. Uh, or I'm sorry, on Friday, it actually, <clears throat> it's already 11, so it doesn't allow you to show it um, at this time. But here you see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's blacked out, which means we can't show it at any of these times. The ones that are white, you can select any one of those and show it between those times. The ones that are gray means we can show it, but the time frame is so short, we may not get an answer from the agent um, that quickly, okay? Um, but we could still select it, right? And it'll say here, if you've requested an appointment at 10, that may be too soon for us to confirm. Although this may be difficult to set up on short notice, we will make every effort to accommodate your request, right? So you select whatever day you want, let's say tomorrow, 2 p.m., then this will come out and it'll tell you, okay, you're looking to set up an appointment for tomorrow, 2 p.m., it'll be about a 15 minute showing, okay? You don't have to put the buyer's name, you don't have to put any information here. Just click on where it says request appointment and then it will automatically send an email to the listing agent, it'll send them a text message and they should get back to you within about 15 or 20 minutes, okay? Depending on their, um, uh, what they're doing at the moment, right? If they're not doing anything, they should get back to you right away. If they are doing something, maybe they get back to you with a message saying, hey, I'll get right back to you, I'm with a client. 
Um, but you have to follow up on those shows, okay? So once you request it, if you see that in 20 minutes you haven't received a response, I would contact the agent um, here with these phone numbers here and say, hey, I sent you a showing request. Can you please let me know if I can show the property at the time that I requested? And just follow up is key. Follow up is key both with your clients and with agents to make sure that you have uh, information, okay? Um, any questions on the listing or how to request a showing here on the, on the MLS? Okay, great. Um, additionally, you're going to want to at some point work with clients that are looking for selling properties, okay? In order to place properties in the MLS, we have to make sure that we have the correct documentation it needs to be signed by the owner of the property, okay? Um, I do have a class called listings, listing agreements, which I show you what documents need to be filled out by each owner, depending on the type of listing that you're putting. And I'll show you how to list that property into the MLS, okay? Our company does require that we have all documentation sent to our, our broker and signed by the broker in order for us to upload into the MLS. So most important thing is the documentation and then we can fill out the listing or we can do the listing online and just save it as incomplete. And once all the documents have been signed off, the office will go ahead and upload it into the MLS. Okay, so how do you do that is this button right here where it says add edit. You're also going to find the add edit here on the main page. And it's a big blue one that says add edit. Okay, but for now, let's work here on matrix. Let's click add edit. And then it's going to tell you, okay, you want to add edit a new listing, right? So we add new. And then here you're going to find what types of listings we can do. Okay. We can do a single family listing. We can do condo or townhouse listing. These two are sales. The first two are sales. Okay. The third one is a residential rental. So anything that's a rental, even if it's a townhouse that you're renting, do not click here to rent that townhouse or to list that townhouse as a rental. You're going to click here where it says residential rental to list the townhouse as a rental. Okay. These two are for sales. This one is for rental. We have residential land, boats, docks, as I mentioned before, residential income, which are duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes that are for sale, not rental, sale duplexes, okay? Commercial land, commercial improved, and business opportunity. So these are the items or the ones that we had shown before, right? Um, so you're going to click on whatever it is you want. Let's say residential rental, right? It's going to take you to this website. You're going to click on what county it's in, and then you're going to put the tax ID of the property here. Okay, so if I click this one, let's say that's one that I had done, and I click search, it's going to automatically find that house um, within Miami-Dade uh, or within uh, IMAP, right? So if this is the actual property, and these are the people I've spoken to, and this is the address, I'm going to click here on fill, and when I click on fill, it's going to automatically fill in a few things, okay? We can leave this as active. And then as you go through each tab here, you'll notice that there are some things highlighted in yellow and some things that are not highlighted. The things that are highlighted in yellow are absolutely important to be filled out. If they're not filled out, the listing will not upload. So everything that's in yellow must be filled out. The things that are in white, it's not necessary to fill out. It is, an, it is optional. I recommend you do fill out as much of the white or, or unhighlighted areas that um, you can. Okay, the more you put into the listing, the better the listing is gonna look, the more information it's gonna have. Okay, so in the listing, you're just gonna go through each one of these tabs and fill in what it is that you need to fill in. Okay, once you're done, you're gonna validate. Okay, and the system's gonna check the entire listing and see if there's any problems, right? If there are any problems, you're gonna see these little red dots here. Okay, and if you could just click on them, those red dots will then take you to the areas that need filling. Okay, once you fill that out, let's say I just fill this one out and I validate again, you'll notice that that little red area has already disappeared. Obviously this one is still here.
because there's others that need to be filled out. But as you start filling them out, it'll start to erase the little red um, error, error buttons, okay? Once you're done and you have none, you're gonna save as incomplete. You'll send an email to our office and let them know, hey, this is the MLS number for the listing that I just put in the system. Please make sure you upload it as soon as you can based on the documentation that I've sent you signed by our owner, right? Um, and then they will review all the documentation, send it to the listing, um, sorry, to the broker. The broker will sign all the documents and the office will then upload it into the MLS, okay? Um, so this is definitely how you, this is how you're going to do any listings, okay? Again, I'm, this was just over the top. I do have a listings course, which I do recommend you come to, and I'm more in depth in that course, so you'll be able to get a better understanding of how to put in a listing, okay? Um, any questions on that? Okay. Um, we also do um, some comparables, right? Let's say you want to do comparables. Comparables are uh, fun to do. Uh, I enjoy doing them, seeing what's in the area, what I can help negotiate my client into getting, what I can help negotiate my client into selling their property with. Right, so how we're gonna do that is depending on what type of property you're looking for, right? Let's, let's say rental, right? We're gonna go search, search, rental. And let's say my client is interested in renting their property, right? Hey, I wanna rent my property. I just don't know for how much, great. Here on this status area, you're going to put pending and rented, okay? What's pending and rented in the last six months, okay? And then the area, you're gonna put this address here. As you put the address, the system will start to recognize the area you're looking for. Okay. Um, yes. So as you put the address, the system will start to put a box saying what the address you're looking for is. Once you find that address, once the system sees the address, you're going to click on that address, right? Now it's going to say this is what's been pending and renting. It'll say seven matches within 0.25 miles. Right? Let's say I want to see more. Let's say half a mile. Now I have 11 matches, right? Okay. My property is three bedrooms, two baths, and a half bath, right? I only have one. Let's take off the half bath. It gives me seven, okay? Let's look at the results. So within this area, this is the actual community that I'm looking for, right? It's Villarreal, and I'll know that because I've already met with my client and I know which property where the area is, right? And it's gonna show me that properties in this area have rented within the last six months between 1650 and 1950, right? Depending on how the property is. So some are located in different ones, right? So what I like to do at this point is create a nice little report. I can ch check all of them, press print, and click here where it says CMA one line summary report. Once I print a PDF, Okay, it's gonna give me a nice little report for me to send to the client. You'll notice the header is up here and I'll be able to send this report and say, hey, Mr. Client, these properties have recently rented in your area, okay? They originally listed for, or original price was this between 1750 and 2000. And this is what the sold price has been, right? So you can pretty much expect a 90 a 5% discount on anything we listed on that's what's happening in this area right now and depending on the price you put it in and you know the location or, or or what the interior looks like they're going anywhere from 2 weeks to 2 months to be able to sell this property right so we want to be smart in how we price point this right so for instance this one that lasted 185 days was price point at $2,000 originally. We don't wanna wait there for six months unless you have no timetable, right? This one that was listed for 1,800 um, was there for a little over a month. It sold for 1,700, 
right? But if you start noticing here, the ones that were listed at 1750, they're still going two months, but some are selling within the month or so. So I definitely would recommend, see down here, your average. It's saying the original average price is 1836. Right, the list, the average listing price is 1764. The average selling price is 1736, which means we can expect to get at least 1750 on your property. Okay, but be ready to wait more or less two months. Okay, if you're looking to get this rented very fast, I say we start listing it at the lower end. Okay, but if you want to list it at the higher end, be ready to wait. Okay, the average price per Square foot is $1.56 with properties in this area. Okay, if your property is worth $1,090, you're gonna look to pay roughly around. So see, it gives you a lot of information, right? 156 times, let's say it's 1090, $1,700 would be the perfect price for your property, okay? If you want a little more, we can list it at 1800, but we would be willing to wait. If we will list it at 1750, we could be expecting 1750 or 1650 as an offer. Okay, where we have some leave room and we can ask for 1700 if that's something you're interested in. So you'll notice that this has a lot of information that you can speak about to your listing or to your client, um, and your client will thank you for it. And you know, this is a very helpful tool for us to have with MLS. Any questions on? Uh, how to do this comparable? Al this quick Albert. Yes. Albert. Yes. Can, uh, I lost. Can you go back how you go to comparative market? Sure. Just to show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Okay. So you're going to put. Um, you're going to search what type of property is it? Is it a sale property? Is it a rental property? What property is it that you're going to list? Okay, let's say it's a selling property. You're going to click on the option to sell, right? Then you're going to put here the address of the property that you want to do, right? Southwest 74th. So you're going to see down here a box that has the address. And you're going to click the address, okay? Here, you can change it to half a mile if you'd like or keep it at a quarter of a mile. The closer you are to the address, the better the comparables are, right? I'm going to take off active and I'm going to put closed sale and pending sales, okay? This is going to tell me what has closed in the last six months and what is pending at the moment to sell. It's going to tell me there's 19 properties, okay? If the property I'm selling is single family, Let's click single family. There's no problem doing that, okay? If the property I'm selling is a townhouse, let's click on townhouse. The system will automatically look for what's available in that area based on your criteria. In this area, there are no townhouses or villas. There's only single family. So let's click single family, right? I have 19. Now I need to make sure I'm looking for how many bedrooms are in that property. Three bedrooms, two baths. Now it tells me there's nine properties in half a mile of this address that have closed or are pending single family with three, two. Okay. I don't have a pool in the property that I'm looking for. The property that I'm searching doesn't have a pool. So I'm going to put no pool. Now that nine is going to go to six. Okay. So now I have a more perfect result on what I'm looking for. When I click on results, it's going to tell me now from those six that are within half a mile, Three of them have closed, two of them are pen or three of them are pending, right? So here are the prices of what has sold, okay, and what is pending to sell. So what I can do for a uh, report is click all of them. Then I'm gonna go to print and then CMA one line summary report. And I'm gonna print to PDF. When I print to PDF, it's gonna pull out a report for me. Okay. And once I get that report, I can now send this report to the client and it's going to show me now, okay, the three that have sold closed sales and the three that are pending. And here down here, it's going to give me a average. Okay. It's going to say 
The highest one that sold is 425. The lowest is 335, and the medium is 399. <coughs> Excuse me. So here are the original prices. Here's the selling price for these. Okay. Here's the time it took for them to sell. Okay. And then here are the ones that are pending right now. Okay. This one most likely is a short sale because it's 280 and area and properties in that area are going for close to 400, as you notice here, right? So the average of everything is saying, hey, Mr. Client, the sale price that we can expect is anywhere from 386 uh, to 399, okay? The listing price we should be placing it at is above 378. And the original price that it's normally placed at is, you know, 379. So here are the medians for the sales, here are the medians for the pendings. And at this point you have a good uh, list of properties to show your client so that they're aware of what their properties are looking for, okay? Again, this is just overview, this is very quick. I do have a listing class and that class I'll be more specific in how to do this and an actual report for comparative market analysis, okay? Thank you so much, Albert. Thank you. To get idea. Thank you. Um, any other questions uh, with how to search for, you know, uh, comparatives or how to use the search page and matrix um, for anything? Cool. Um, so that is matrix. Um, if you want to see any recent searches that you guys have done, if you click here where it says recent searches, it'll show you all the recent searches that you did. Okay. Um, so if you want to go back to a current search that you were doing for a client, you can come over here and click on that previous search. Also, if you send any properties to your client by email and you, they call you and they say, Hey, I like number five that you sent me. If you go to where it says my matrix and sent email, you'll be able to see all the emails that you sent recently to any client. So if, you know, I, you know, this is my mom. So if my mom calls and says, Hey, I like number four. I can come over here to send emails. I can click on number six on how many listings I sent her and I'll be able to see which one number four is the system automatically updates as, um, the listings are updated. So if there's an uh, A means it's active, AC means active with contract, uh, PS means pending sale, uh, C means closed, X means expired. Um, so all these statuses will be here and they update as the days go on. Okay, so this is how you'll be able to see the properties that you sent. And if you send any auto emails, you can click here where it says auto email and it'll show you any auto emails that are sent. Okay, um, I do want to show you how to send auto emails. Um, let's say you did a search, um, right? And the search is for, uh, say, 305,000 or less. Okay, um, how many bedrooms? You put three or more. So it'll search for more three, two or more. It'll search for more than two bathrooms in Miami Dade. These are very specific on what you put. If you only put 305, it's only going to show you properties that are worth 305,000. So if you want to see anything less than 305 or up to 305, you have to put that negative sign afterwards. Okay. And the system automatically adds the three zeros here, as long as this is checked off. Okay. Um, so these are properties in Miami Dade three, two. Um, oh, and the map, I forgot to send you the map. Okay. This is how you use the map. Okay. Once you put in the criteria that you're looking for, you can click on map. And when you click on the map, you can zoom out to show how many properties there are. You, obviously, when you zoom out, it's just going to give you numbers in the areas that there's properties, right? But the closer you get, you'll be able to see the avenues and the streets and the map. Okay, so if your client is looking for a specific area, you could just go to the map and if they tell you, hey, I want to live by uh, Miami International Airport. I want to live no further than five miles away from the airport. 
right? We can come to the Miami International Airport. You'll be able to see it here. And if you click on this circle, it's actually a radius. So when you click on it, it'll turn yellow, okay? Then you put your cursor right on International Airport and you extend. And as you extend, it's gonna say how many miles you're going out of the airport. So let's say this is 506. We click on it and now this radius shows me five miles in either direction, what's available that is part of my criteria, right? I had put less than 300 to five, three or more bedrooms, two or more bath. Uh, what type of property? I didn't mention one, but let's say I wanna put single family. I select single family. And if I go back to the map now, it's gonna show me that all these properties are available within five miles Right, so if I wanna see them now, I'm gonna click results, and then it's gonna give me the results of those properties, okay? Um, and then of course, to see the information, I'm gonna click here on the ML, and it's gonna give me the information for the listing, okay? Now, uh, let's say my client tells me, hey, I'm interested in five miles away from the airport, but I have family that lives in the Kendall area. So I don't mind living in the Kendall area, but you know, either one of those two are fine. Well, perfect, what part of Kendall? Oh, you know, close to the other airport, right? Okay, perfect. So if we get closer, we'll notice here where the other airport is, right? So if we want to now draw a map, okay, of what's in that area, which is West Kendall, Let's just go from here to here, okay? And all it shows me is one. There's only one in that area, right? Okay, that's no problem. But now if you notice on my search field, I have the first search and the second search that they wanted. So whenever I send them now the email and results, okay, I'll be able to show them the two areas that they wanted. Here's the list of everything that's in those two areas. I can just click it, click here on email, and then send the email to the client, okay? But if I wanna set up an auto email, let's say they're not ready to buy right now, but they wanna buy in the future, okay? So I can just click it, and then I can go to save new auto email, okay? So I click all the, all the properties, click save, and new auto email. And when I click that, it's gonna tell me to create a new contact. I'll put their name and information and their email address, okay? Then once I do that, I can just put uh, available properties, right? Avail, sorry. Right, um, in airport area, right? And that's how the search is going to be saved and you'll notice here it gives them already information to the portal it puts your signature here that you have created and here in the criteria it automatically has kept the criteria that we did so from here on out if you select a day let's say every monday and friday okay every monday and friday your client is going to receive an email based on the search that we did for them and it's going to show new properties that have entered uh, within this search criteria um, every weekend and every, you know, first day of the week. So this way they're seeing how the market is moving, how the market is adding new things. If nothing new has changed, they're not going to receive an email. Um, but this is a good way of maintaining your name and your information in front of the client so that they're seeing that there's an email coming in from you of all these properties weekly, right? And this way they can see if they're not ready yet, they're gonna be able to see what's coming in and they're gonna see that you're interested in making sure they find the perfect home. So once an email comes in with something that they really like, they're gonna contact you and say, hey, I got your email. And there's a property that I really like. I'd like to go see it. Uh, maybe we can do something earlier. Okay, great. You know, what's the property? They're gonna say, oh, you just sent me the email uh, two days ago. And I just saw it. So what you're going to do is my matrix auto email. 
and then it's going to send see show you the emails here i don't do many auto emails but it's going to show you the email here that was sent uh two days ago and now you'll be able to click listing exactly how we did before and you'll be able to see the property that he's talking about so definitely there's always a way to be able to find out what you sent a client there's a way to keep them involved in automatic email so that they see that you know you're sending them the properties um, that you know they're looking for even if they're not ready to purchase right now the system does allow you to set up that sort of concierge service so that they get emails automatically based on what they're looking for okay any questions on that Albert. Albert. Yes. Albert? Yes. Albert, one question. When you're trying to send the the customer uh uh two places like Kendall and like Seawater, like sample, the one you did, you uh both the um the the circle one and the other one to give it the two location. I don't know you got me. Say that again. Um, when you're trying to send to the co uh, customer the two location, like like you did right now, two location, where do you click? You click to send by email the two location. Like example, she wants Kendall and the other one is Kendall close to the airport. Okay. Where you click to send the two location because I'm trying to do the other day and then I couldn't do it. So you're going to go to the map after you put uh -huh. the criteria. Okay. You're going to go to the map. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're going to select the area that you want. Let's say they want the uh, fountain blue area. Right? Okay. You're going to click the square. Oh. Oh, okay. The square. Okay. And then put fountain blue area. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let's say they say they're looking for the South Miami area. You're going to click the square again and then just go to the South Miami area. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, you don't click the other one, the close to the the square one, the uh, the this, round one. This or the round one? Yeah, that one. The round one is the radius. So if oh. they tell you, I need to live three miles away from Baptist Hospital. Oh, okay. okay? That's the one you use. Okay. Mm, you're gonna okay. go through the map. You're gonna go to where Baptist Hospital is. Okay. It's on 87th Avenue and Kendall, right? Which mm -hmm. is area right here and you just get the circle and now you pinpoint me from there and you extend up to where it says three miles mm, okay okay and now you have the search field of the radius you have the other two search fields as okay well. okay you want to delete it you're going to press the red or, or put yeah. the, the red button and delete shape mm-hmm Okay. okay, if so I want to send the boat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Say that again. If I want to send the boat, you know, the one, the two criteria I have, the, um, the one you did before. These two? Yes, yes. At this point, all you need to do is check all here, or if you go to results. Okay, result. I click result. Oh, okay. Okay, then click all. It's going to check all the properties that you have. Obviously, you're not going to send 606. I know. Okay. <laughs> so once your criteria shows up that there's like nine of them, if you click all, it's going to check off all of them. And then all you need to do is go to email. Email. Right. Right now, it doesn't show me because there's way too many properties. Okay. I got you. Um, okay. Yes. But, okay. okay. Let me uncheck and let me just check 25. And then you'll see that it gives you the email here. Then you okay. just email, and then you put the client's email, the subject, and 
you know, mm -hmm. maybe some properties I found in the area. Let me know what you think. Okay, got you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was sorry. I was yeah, the, the map is the best way to search, in my opinion. It's more okay. precise and, and, and it helps you find the exact location that your client is looking for. Okay, thank you so much, Albert. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, cool. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining the class. That's what I got for Matrix. Um, obviously, as you play with Matrix a little bit more, you're going to learn more tricks, more tips. Uh, the more familiar you get with it, the easier it's going to get. Um, I do recommend that you play with it. Um, you know, if, if, if you don't have any clients right now, make yourself some scenarios. You know, you found a client, the client's looking for a townhouse or a single family house or a condo for this price range in this area with this many rooms. I mean, make yourself a scenario and then start to um, look and search for those scenarios and see how you can better your search and increase your search. Um, so that that way, whenever you do have a client, you have more uh, experience with the system and you'll be able to give them better results. All right. So that's what I got guys. Again, I have more classes coming up. Please check the calendar. And if you'd like to join us, feel free. Uh, this month, all the classes are going to be in English, so I want all of you to be aware of that. Um, but please join us. Um, we'll definitely um, show you new tricks and new tips and things for you guys to, uh, you know, become more experts with the system, okay? Thank you all for coming today, and I hope you guys enjoyed the class. And if there's uh, any questions that you guys may have, I'm going to stay online for about another 10 minutes or so just to uh, answer those questions, all right? Thank you very much. Have a great day and a great weekend.